Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, shall we start? Yeah, let's uh, begin. Let's... Uh, who will we begin with? Uh, yourself? Will you introduce okay. the session? Uh, yeah. Well, I'd like to introduce uh, you first to our participants mm -hmm. because I haven't talked about you a lot. Mm -hmm. And to all of our dear participants, we hope that uh, you can turn your camera on so that we can interact. You, all of you, we can see each other. Yes, well, absolutely. Uh, let me read your bio first before heading on to the material. So Hugh is an Australian who has lived in Indonesia for almost 15 years. He taught English to all ages from playgroup play children to military leaders and as an educational consultant has trained and guided educators from kindergarten teachers to university professors. He is very passionate about language instruction and improving education. He also teaches Indonesian as a foreign language. So he can speak Indonesia, guys. <laughs> okay, he yes, first... Please, please, <laughs> he first lived in Indonesia in 2001 and developed an intense personal interest in the cultures, uh, languages, and history of oh, yeah, Archipelago. Yeah. This eventually led to his study of Islam, which began when he was just in high school. He is closely connected with many international students studying in Australia and around the world, and is a great person to ask advice about how to achieve your dreams. Okay, well done. <laughs> Dream. Uh, it's something that Excellent. all of you uh, are interested about. Okay, I believe we have a lot of dreams to achieve, so he may help you in uh, what you in, in uh, is it overcoming the, the obstacles that you have currently, especially in learning English. Uh, in it's a, a bridge because English could be a bridge uh, to achieve what you want to have later on. Okay, shall we start? Well, I give the time for Mr. Hugh. Please. Okay, great. Let's begin. Uh, before I begin the presentation, let me get to know all of you a little bit. Uh, so first of all, how many of you would like to study overseas later? Miss, maybe you can mute. You can mute oh. all the participants first. Oh, yeah, sorry. So they can unmute themselves yeah, when they want to talk. Okay, okay so please uh, put your hand up. And if you want to answer, how many of you would like to study overseas? Okay, ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Our host would like to. Dimas, yeah. yes? Or is Dimas stretching? I think Dimas is stretching. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, he really wants. I think he really wants to study overseas. Okay, so he's putting two hands up. Um, how about Aninda? Is it Aninda or Anindia? Okay, yes, absolutely. Great. Alia, would you like to study overseas? Yes, a smile. Oh, and a thumbs up. Great, good. All right. Yes, well, it's very easy now compared to previously for Indonesians to study overseas. Um, and there are a lot of scholarships available. I have many, many Indonesian friends who have gotten the LD, I think it's the LDPD scholarship. Is that the one, Miss? Yes. I, yes. I get the letters LPDP. wrong. So yes, that's right. Mm -mm, yes, I have so many friends who have gotten that. And also there are individual scholarships from countries like Australia and the US that they offer specifically for Indonesians. So there's a lot available. And I have it from my good friend who is involved in the allocation of scholarships that sometimes they don't have enough applicants. Wow. So there's some scholarships that go and they haven't filled all the seats and the seats are wasted. So it's definitely something to think about. But the first thing you need to think about is, of course, your English. Okay, so far, if you have understood what I've said, I want you to put your hand up or give me a thumbs up if you've have understood what I've just said. Okay, yes, Irham, good, anyone else? Yeah, yes, Alia, excellent. Who else has understood me? Elian, good, excellent. 
Razan, excellent, very good. All right, so, and that's fine if you only understand 80%. That's fine, no problem, right? The main thing is that you are understanding me. Otherwise, I'll have to switch to Indonesian. All right, I don't think you guys want to hear me speak Indonesian the whole time, do you? <laughs> No, okay, the, the host is saying no, don't do that. All right, um, so let's go on to our presentation first. Um, can I share this? Am I sharing this screen? Yes. Yeah, you can see that, excellent. All right, so I want, um, I want Alia to read the title of the presentation just so I can make sure you can all see it. Alia, can you please read the title? Yes. Uh, building a language switch in students, a presentation by Huge L. R. Elliot Abdullah Al Farq. Excellent. Very good. Thank you, Alia. Right. So, a language switch. What happens when you speak a foreign language fluently? You essentially have a switch in your brain. That's why when we talk about bilingual people speaking English or speaking any two languages, they can switch between the two languages very easily and they don't have to translate between the two. How many of you have a problem translating always from Indonesian to English? Put your hand up if you have this problem. So you're always translating. Anybody have this problem? No? Oh, so some, some of the people who come to me, they say they have this problem, always translating. Uh, oh, somebody's drawing. Oh, no, this always happens in the Zoom meeting. Somebody starts drawing. Yeah. Probably an accident, though. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next slide. All right, so this is me. And I don't have a photo of me in Tasik, Tasik Malaya, because I've never been there. It's too bad, right? Uh, I've been meaning to go. But this is me in Bogor. And the people there speak Sundanese. And I'm, I've been trying to learn Sundanese. I hire a tutor to teach me, um, but so fast, not too much. All right, let's go on. This is the presentation today. So I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I came to Islam just shortly, because a lot of people have a question about that at the end. So I usually put it at the front. <laughs> uh, next, we're going to have a little bit of a warm up, And I'm going to tell you what I found through teaching my students, because I have taught um, taught or made programs for about 3,000 students now, which is a lot. And almost all of those students are from Indonesia. So I really understand the problems that you guys have when you study English. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my experience students here when they studied. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the first one. So the reason why I came to Islam is because I got introduced to it from some Indonesian friends. Now, in the beginning, everybody hid their Islam from me. They didn't want to show that they were Muslims. Uh, they would say that I'm Muslim. They would try to explain it, but they wouldn't really open up too much. For example, when they prayed, they would sneak off to their rooms and, and pray not in front of me. Uh, they were afraid that it would upset me or something like that. And when I asked them about Islam, a lot of the time they just told me all the things you have to do as a Muslim, have to do. For example, I have to pray. I have to, uh, I always said, eat halal food. I am not allowed to do this. I'm not allowed to do that. And so it didn't seem very exciting for me at first. But when I went to read the Quran, I found that Islam is something much deeper and much more beautiful than that. And so here you see this is one verse from the Quran, and this is one of the verses that really affected me deeply when I was reading it. I want, uh, let me see, who am I going to choose to read? I want an India. An India. Can you please read? Okay. Uh, Surah Al Jaziah, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, and has subjected to you all that is in the heavens 
and all that is in the earth. It is all as a vivor and kindness from him. Rarely in it are signs for a people who think deeply. Okay, very good. Well, good pronunciation. Well done. Thank you. Right. So this is a surah and an ayat to make us reflect, to make us reflect on all that we've been given around us and the beauty and the perfection of Allah's creation. And this is something that touched me deeply when I was reading the Quran, because whenever these verses came to me, I would close the Quran, I would think. And I would, in life, I think about the miracle of life. And this made me become closer to God. And that made me feel, uh, we, we say Iman, one way to uh, translate Iman is how close do you feel to God? And so that's why I came to Islam, because through the Quran and through the example of the Prophet, I felt much, much closer to God. Now, one of the things that God gave to us was a natural language acquisition device. Now, the scientists have found this out through the last 50 years or so, but probably people have known about this for a long time. And that is that uh, Dimas, Irham, Arafi, all of you can speak your first language very well and very easily. Is it true? Yeah, you can speak Indonesian very well and very easily. But nobody sat you down with a book and taught you word by word, did they? No, you had the chance to learn from your parents, to learn from your friends, to learn from your family. And it came very easily. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you this device in your brain. It's called a language acquisition device. Now, the problem with the study that we have in a lot of our schools is it doesn't really use this device. It puts the language in a strange context and it teaches you word by word, one by one. And then it tests you one by one. And then it says, you're wrong, you're right. Oh, we taught you this word last week. You got it wrong. Okay, your score is low, but that never happened to you when you were learning Indonesian, correct? Yes, absolutely. Your, your mother would just be happy what, if you said the word completely wrong. I don't know, what's a baby word? Who can think of a baby word that babies like to say and it's completely wrong? Can everybody tell me? You can unmute yourself and tell me some baby words you know of. I don't know, maybe mum. Mum is to eat, right? I hear the baby say, mum, mum. And the parents say, mum, mum. What is mum? <laughs> Makan, mum. Why has it got an M at the end? It's a baby word, right? And so the parents are happy if the child suddenly says, mum, mum, I want to eat. Or instead of water, he, he'll say, uh, wah, 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 instead of water. The parents will be happy and congratulate them. And say, yes, good, yes, okay, I'm getting the water for you now. They won't say no water for you until you say water correctly, right? Okay, yeah. so in the same way, we need to appreciate the gift that Allah gave us because everything in Allah's creation is perfect and we need to trust our own minds to learn the language, all right? So warm-up time, boom, all right? So I want you guys to turn on your cameras so I can see you very important for this warm-up. Uh, I'm going to show you some different things, some different facts. First of all, on the left, what do you see? What is this uh, thing on the left? Who can tell me? You can unmute yourself. The picture on the left? A mountain. A mountain. Good. Mm -mm, very good. <laughs> you... Yes, Mount Everest. Fantastic. It's Mount Everest. Okay, what's special about Mount Everest? It is the uh, highest mountain in the world. Good, excellent. So I want you guys to use your hands with me. It is the highest mountain in the world. Can you do that for me? Let's do it together. Uh, right, come on. One, two, three. It's the highest mountain um, in the world. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Perfect. Very good. 
All right, next one, we have a picture of a very large cat. What is that? It's a oh, cheetah. A cheetah, very good. What's special about a cheetah? Can run so fast? Yeah, so fast. Not only so fast, but it is the... It's the fastest. fastest. Excellent, good job. All right, so let's say together, a cheetah... A cheetah, cheetah is the fastest animal in the world. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. A cheetah is the fastest animal in the world. Okay, excellent. Great job, guys. All right, last one. What is this here, this body of water? River. A river. Good. This is a bit harder because it doesn't look so famous right but this is a very famous river can you guess what river it is the nile the nile correct excellent yeah it couldn't be the amazon because there's no trees right so it's the nile great very good all right so let's say the nile river is the longest river in the world let's do it together the nile river the longest river in the world. Fantastic. Good. I hope you guys feel warmed up now. And I'm, I'm so impressed. You guys knew all these facts, you know. <laughs> I've done this activity with some teachers before and some of them didn't know. So you did very well. Okay. What I found teaching English. Many of you probably know the benefit of learning English now. When I first started teaching in Indonesia, uh, the students gave me a basic response. They said, because English is an international language, right? But what does it mean if English is an international language? I want to ask Irham, what does it mean for you if English is an international language? Oh, sorry, Irham, your mute came back. Oh, yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure, sure. What does it mean for you that English is an international language? Um, that's language that can be used internationally. Internationally, excellent. Very simple, right? So... That means if you go to Japan, if you go to Thailand, if you go to China, most likely you'll be using English. Yeah. Not, not, not Indonesian, not Chinese, but English. Okay, excellent. Right, so that's something that can help you wherever you go. Business, study. I have a good uh, have a student that studied with me for many years and she went on to study in Germany, right? And she studies in Germany. In what language? Can you guess? In English. In English, that's right. So a lot of degrees offered in Germany, offered in Norway, offered in Northern Europe, are now in English. And not only in Europe, but also degrees that are in South America, degrees that are in Asia, other parts of Asia, like Hong Kong, Taiwan. A lot of them are offered in English. So it allows you to study in almost any place you want. It's really quite amazing, right? Right. So this is your key to the world. Um, so many people, they think, ah, if people want to come and do business in Indonesia, they can learn Indonesian. But the reality is everybody in the world has already started to learn English. So that's why we use it. It's not because... Um, English is a better language, but it's just by default. Yeah, we happen to have it there. All right, so this is what English can do for you or any foreign language. It can increase the amount of knowledge you have, All right? So you can fact check, you can research very easily when you know how to speak English well. Second, your financial prospects are greatly affected. If you don't know how to speak English, it's actually a handicap for you. It causes a problem for you because you cannot have career progression in your office. 
And also maybe nowadays, even you won't get hired because they need staff that speak English so they can deal on a global scale because many companies are selling globally now, like for online shopping, uh, you know, the big boom to the Chinese economy has been online shopping because many people can buy directly from Chinese companies now. So it means the Chinese companies that were only getting 30% of the profit before, they're now getting 80% of the profit. Uh, so Indonesia can also start to go down this track. And many companies and many individuals from America, from the UK, are ordering directly from Indonesia now. So it means you guys can open an online shop and you can target people from the UK or the US and sell your product directly to them and send it from Indonesia. So amazing, right? That's only happened in the last five or 10 years. Maybe because you guys are still uh, young, you don't realize this change, but this is huge. It means the opportunities are very different for you than it was for people who graduated 10 years ago. All right, so let's have a look next. The local community can benefit by you speaking English. How? Well, you could share your English with your friends and your family, of course, but also when you have this knowledge and when you have these added financial prospects and when you're connected to the global community, you help your own. Okay, guys, so most of you already knew this, but I just thought I would remind you because it really is life-changing. Any language is life-changing but especially English. Okay. Untuk yang tidak menyeti sama sekali, sekarang uh, saya mau kalian uh, jawab atau memberikan uh, pengalamannya dari presentasi ini. Apa uh, Anda menyeti dan apakah saya harus mulai pakai bahasa Indonesia? Tidak. Tidak sama sekali. Oke, okay, bagus. Saya harus mencek karena saya apa suka kasihan sama yang tidak bisa nyati sama sekali. Oke, okay, all right. That's all right. We'll continue in English, ya. Yeah? All right, guys. All right. So, my own experience when I was teaching English is first I taught in Melbourne at GEOS, which is a college of English. Now, we had students from all around the world. We had students from Korea, from Italy, from Russia, from different parts of Europe, and they all came in the same classroom and they studied together. Now they could not use their mother tongue. They could not translate back to Korea, Korean with their friend. They could not ask the teacher to speak Korean or to speak Italian. Miss, I don't understand what you're saying. Can you say that in Korean? Of course, the teacher doesn't know all around the world. And many of them were beginners. They didn't speak a lot of English. But within a few months, they were confident speaking English, not only because they had the local environment, but because of the classroom. The classroom made them really confident speaking English because they set themselves a rule that they're going to try and operate in the foreign language and they're going to try and understand as much as they can of the foreign language and this language was very natural for them it was the complete language same like me when i came to indonesia i studied the whole language uh, because i couldn't ask someone hey can you please speak very basic indonesian for me Can you please only use chapter one and chapter two English, uh, Indonesian with me? Of course, nobody uh, can do that, right? Because they're not teachers. They don't make curriculums. They're just selling something or they're doing some business or anything. Yeah? They just want to speak to me, communicate with me about anything. And so from the beginning, I had a full language presented to me. Now, that was not too much for me. It was not a problem. Many of you maybe feel overwhelmed with the size of the English language, but you need to accept that you don't need to understand it all at once. Okay, so 
what I've used in the past is a immersion method, which means that people experience the full language from day one. From the first day you start studying the language, you experience the full language. Okay, so in the beginning, I taught at English first. And back then we had a lot of native speakers teaching at English first. Nowadays, not really, but back then we had a lot. And then, so we used to use full English with the children and the students from day one. And many of the teachers at English first didn't know any Indonesian because they just arrived in Indonesia maybe six months ago or something like that, right? So they use full English. And some of the students were a bit shocked at first, especially the beginners. But again, within about five or six months, they started to feel very comfortable hearing full English. And they started to be able to participate fully in the classes. So guys, it's something that you have to jump into. If you're not comfortable listening to full English, if you're not comfortable being in a full English environment yet, there's only one way that you can become comfortable. And it's not by, you know, studying word by word or phrase by phrase that can help, but you have to put yourself in that situation. All right. I made the, the language programs at a number of schools. This is one of the first ones I made. Uh, we had basically 100% of the students speaking English within one year. And we didn't do much, uh, something fancy for them. We just asked them to speak English every day. And we, with the teachers could speak English and we asked them to speak English every day. And through the uh, natural situations that they were in, their English grew amazingly. Uh, I was shocked. I had one child. He was an orphan, yeah, a nakiatim, and he didn't get much help from his parents, and he was a bit slow in class. And then one day, I was sitting in the playground, and I saw him uh, with another teacher, and they were talking in English. And I thought, okay, that's lovely. And then I, I overheard the conversation, and this boy had only been studying English for maybe seven months at that school. And he started to tell his teacher about a dream that he had the night before, right? So usually students will not feel brave to talk about something in the past because they feel they haven't mastered past tense. And this boy didn't care, of course, and he didn't have to use past tense perfectly, but he was telling about a dream that he had the night before. And that's a beautiful situation. And I was so surprised that he could do that. And all of you can do this. You can speak English, maybe not perfectly. You can tell me about a dream that you had the night before, maybe not perfectly, but you can manage to do it if you feel brave enough and comfortable enough with the people that you're with. Many people, when they study with foreigners like me, or they speak to foreigners who have come here for holiday, suddenly they feel brave to use their English when they don't feel brave with their friends. Because maybe their friends say to them, ah, you're wrong. Ah, you shouldn't say it like that. Ah, so English law. You know? And then this makes their confidence go down. But when they meet someone from America and then they have to spend some time with that person, suddenly they will feel brave to try and use the little English that they have. Why is that? Yeah, shouldn't you feel more ashamed in front of a native speaker who basically has perfect English? You know, your friend is not perfect. And the native speaker is almost perfect, right? Because they used it since they were a child. So shouldn't you feel more ashamed? Uh, but the reality is you don't have to. You don't need to feel ashamed because everyone will appreciate your effort. Okay, I want Razan. Razan, can you turn on your camera? Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. All right, Razan. I want you to tell me, Razan, what you did yesterday. I'm just studying and playing games, just like that. Mm -hmm. Excellent, good. And then, uh, what kind of games are you into at the moment? I'm just playing on mobile games. Mobile games, all right, cool, excellent. You don't like computer games? Mm, not really. Oh, not really, okay, awesome. The perfect. Perfect, Razan, you did well. All right. 
Uh, now you see Razan made a grammar error and probably none of you realized it. And probably even Razan doesn't realize it. But it's not yeah. important. It's not important because I fully understood Razan. Okay, okay. Later, when Razan is doing academic English, he's preparing for university, this will matter a lot that he made a small error. That will matter because his lecturer will say, oh, you made an error, Razan. I'm going to give you less points now. It will matter when he's in university. But at the moment, for his current situation, he doesn't need to worry about one mistake, two mistakes, three mistakes. He doesn't have to worry. The main thing is his English was perfectly functional. Yeah. All right. The next one I'm going to choose is Trisha. Trisha. Thank you, Razan, by the way. Very good. Trisha. Hey, How are you today, Trisha? Hello. Hi. Uh, are you in Tasik Malaya? Yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, yesterday was Saturday. Did you do anything special? Yes, again, reading a book. Reading books, great. So what kind of books are you reading at the moment? Um, the book is titled Hujan by Terelia. Do you know it? I know, I don't. Does anybody else know that book? Is it a famous one? No? Is it any good? Trisha, can you recommend it for us? Yeah. Um, that uh, can I speak Nyampur? Yes, well, if, if you have to, <laughs> if you have to, go ahead. <laughs> Buku itu nyeritain kehidupan di masa depan gitu, 2050. Oh, it's a prediction of the future, yeah? It's like yeah. science fiction. All right, cool. I love those books. All right, thanks so much, Tristia. Well done. Okay. Alrighty then. Okay, so from my experience, the summary from my experience is that every place I went to, we used full English. This is a center that I helped build in Tangerang. Again, we used full English. They only studied with us for two or three hours a week. But again, within six to eight months, they can speak English very confidently. All right, and the key was... From day one, we use real English with them and we get them comfortable to speak to each other. All right. So the first takeaway from my experience is all of you should be using English as much as you can together with your mistakes as much as you can. And also listening. That's the next point. All right. So the only thing that a teacher like Miss uh, Murabith or me can do uh, is light a fire in you and give you an environment that is going to make you comfortable using your English and listening to your English as much as you can. All right. Now, when you build a language, it's like building a house, right? If you get the foundations wrong, this is what happens. This is a house that they tried to lift up because the foundations were broken. Ah, now, a lot of you you, you, you wait too long to use the language and you wait too long to listen to real language. And so a lot of your mistakes are coming from that. For example, the last few students I just talked to, you made some mistakes with present continuous. So when you were supposed to use simple past, like I went, I did, you used simple present continuous. Why is that? It's because for maybe a full year, your teachers were practicing with you the present continuous. And after a year or two, they introduced to you the past tense. Some students can study for many years with English and they're not given the past tense because the curriculum book hasn't introduced it yet. Now that's crazy, because when you listen to somebody naturally use English, they will use the past tense from day one. They're saying, how, how are you today? And the answer is not always, I'm fine. The answer could be, I'm not so good because yesterday my cousin was supposed to come and help me uh, fix my home and then he didn't come so now i've got got to do it all by myself oh my goodness they use phrasal verb they use past tense they use everything together right they didn't just say i'm fine 
And usually native speakers don't always say, I'm fine. They will give you a, a sincere answer sometimes, right? Uh, you're at a restaurant and you want to order something. Uh, oh, could I please have uh, fried rice? And then the waiter says, uh, would you like uh, some chili sprinkles with that? Um, we've had a recent delivery of great chili. I, I really do recommend it. Now, if you hadn't practiced all those words and phrases, you'd be like, okay, what is he saying? Or, what, <laughs> what have I done wrong learning English, right? And the reality is it's because you need to experience real English from day one. Okay, now, if we only test you on what you can produce, the problem is you never get to build up any foundation. Now, most of you can probably understand 80% of what I've been saying so far. Is that right? If it's right, just nod your head or give me a thumbs up if you've been able to understand about 80% of what I've been saying. Anyone? Arafi? Yeah, Dimas, have you been able to understand maybe 80% of what I've been saying? Yes, all right, okay, hands up. Great, good. <laughs> I like your enthusiasm. Saddam, have you been able to understand most of what I've been saying? Saddam? Saddam's video is frozen. Oh, okay, there he is. Yes, thumbs up. Thumbs up, Saddam, or no, kind of not. All right, that's all right, no problem. Can you all hear the sound? Wait a second. I would like to buy a hamburger. You would like to buy a ham burger. No, no, no. Let's break it down. I, uh, I, I, would, 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 would like, 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 to, 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 to. Bye. 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 A. A. Hamburger. 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 Ham. Ham. Burr. Burr. Gur. Gur. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. It's not damburger. Hamburger. I'm not saying damburger. I said, I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. <laughs> okay, so before we continue, I want some of you to try and say this phrase. Okay, uh, Keza, Keza, can you try to say, I would like to buy a hamburger? Keza, you have a go. Yes, Keza, go ahead. I would like to buy a hamburger, try. Oh, I think your microphone's not working so well, hun. Sorry. Okay, we'll go on to somebody else. Um, Fatia, Fatia, can you try? I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy hamburger. Sorry. Uh -huh. Would like to buy a hamburger. Try. I want to like to... Uh -huh. To buy hamburger. Right. Hamburger. hamburger. Okay. Well, your your pronunciation is good. Much better than this guy. All right. So, um, next one is Anken. Anken. Can you please try? Oh, you're on mute, hun. You have to unmute first. All right. Yeah. I would hamburger. like to buy hamburger. Oh, very good. Not bad. Okay. The next one is uh, Mutia. Mutia, you try. I would like. Mutia? Mutia R, are you there? Oh, maybe she's not there. All right. Um, let's try Ine. Ine. Miss Ine, you want to try? Yeah. 
No, not here. I think we have a few people who have left. <laughs> Just left the, the camera on, the, the sound on. Uh, that's okay. I do that sometimes too in seminars. But we, we do want you to see you guys and to have you participate. Maybe we'll go to somebody with their camera on. Dimas, have a go. I would like to buy a hamburger. Uh, I would like, I would, I would, uh -huh. I, like. I would like, I would like to buy. Uh, I would like to buy uh, hamburger. Excellent. Very good. Okay. So you see, it's not so hard for you guys to say it. Why is it so hard for this guy? Well, I will tell you why. Some people from different language backgrounds find pronunciation very difficult. The French. The French find English pronunciation very difficult. The Japanese speakers find English pronunciation very difficult. I've taught some students from Vietnam before. Very difficult for them to pronounce English. Guess what? Indonesians find it very easy. So you guys have a few little problems, like sometimes with the silent letters, sometimes with the R, you overpronounce the R when you say a word, sometimes. But that only takes, ah, you give me a week or two with you and you will stop doing these things. Very easy to fix. Now for people from France, people from Japan, people from Vietnam, it's very difficult to fix their pronunciation. Okay, so not only pronunciation, but also English itself is very easy for Indonesian speakers. Put your hand up if you feel that English is very easy. <laughs> Probably, oh, some of, yes, okay, All right, some of you do, that's good. So many Indonesians say, ah, oh, susah, bahasa English susah, rumit, you know? They say that it's very difficult, very complicated, but you don't realize that you guys have a great advantage over other people who speak different languages. Let's continue because this video is quite funny. This scene, I'll show you. I would like to buy the hamburger. Hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. Maybe we should stop. We don't quit. We do not quit. Again, again. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy the burger. I would like to buy a hamburger. 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 The burger. Hand check on two. Is this your bag, sir? Yes, it is. So he's hiding a hamburger Go ahead. in his pocket. I have nothing to hide <laughs> in my bag. Come with me, sir. Whoa, wait here, pal. I'm just pocket knife. Say I'm just pair of nunchucks. I don't, I don't, I don't even own a mess. I don't know where that came from. I've never seen that stuff in my life. Jimbo, you don't need Jimbo. Your birthday. What's in your pocket, sir? Uh, missing. Sir, I'll say again. What's in your pocket? Missing. I'm going to ask you again. What's in your pocket, sir? All right. I have in my pocket a couple of adverts. What? I have in my pocket. Okay, who can tell me what he's trying to say? Who can tell me what this man is trying to say? Maybe. Okay. Uh, say Hamburger. again. <laughs> I have in my pocket a couple of. I don't know. A uh, couple of <laughs> hamburgers. Yeah, that's okay. right. A couple of hamburgers. Perfect. Well done, guys. <laughs> a couple of dollars. Sir? And dollars. Sir, in your pocket you have. All right, I have. The... And I'll do um, I'm sorry, what's more? Uh, again. Damn it, sir. Hand, 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 h
I'm fine, Doc. Sir? Sir, I'm losing my patience. Oh, you are? You are losing your patience? Yes. I'm sitting here telling you I have a couple of dumbbells. <laughs> I've got an Andartar down on six. I've got an Andartar down on six. Watch the wound, sir. Show me the hand, sir. All right, I'll just show you. <laughs> okay, All right. So pronunciation is important, yeah, guys. <laughs> All right. So that's a uh, funny example. This is from a movie called. Uh, I won't tell you the name. I'll get you guys to tell me. Who knows this movie? Who knows what it's called? No. Yes, Alia. Yeah? Pink Panther. Pink Panther. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a Pink Panther. It's very good. It was a good movie. I would like to buy it. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Okay, this is what happens when you learn a language. Right? You go through different stages. The first one is pre-production. So it means you can nod yes, or shake no, or maybe point or draw or respond. Like I tell you to get something, you can try to get it for me. Now, a lot of the time, the teachers don't realize that this stage is very important. This stage is a time for you to listen to a lot of language and a lot of natural language and to be able to respond to it, to be able to say yes or no, and nobody says you're wrong, okay? So young children have this beautiful time where nobody says they're wrong and they can listen to a lot of the language and react to it and respond to it. Now in school, you don't get that, do you? Straight away, you have to start using the language. Okay, the next stage is early production. So it means you can use very simple phrases. And what do children do when they're speaking their first language? Do they use complex grammar? Do they use the future tense, past tense? No, they don't. They use very simple uh, grammar. They, they understand complex grammar. They understand it, but they don't produce it. Okay, so this is uh, the the gap that we have. Now, the problem in school is you cannot produce complex grammar, so the teacher does not use it with you and you never hear it. And that's a big problem because later on, when you learn it, you have no reference point, okay? Unless maybe you enjoy um, listening to English uh, music or maybe you like watching English movies, Okay, then you have a chance to understand what the teacher is introducing to you. Okay, one to three years, uh, the students can have good pro uh, comprehension, produce simple sentences. Sometimes they still make grammar and pronunciation errors. All right, and you, you misunderstand jokes. Intermediate fluency is three to five years. It means you make very few errors. So if you've been learning English, for three to five years, you shouldn't be making a lot of errors, okay? And then the last five to seven years, you have advanced fluency. And this is for speakers of Indonesian learning English, okay? It's different if you speak Mandarin and you learn English. It will take longer than this because Mandarin is a very different language to English. But for speakers of Indonesian, it only takes five to seven years to get to advanced fluency, which means like uh, you could go and do a master's degree in a country and your English would be almost the same as a native speaker. Does that make sense? Okay, excellent, good. So how do we actually gain the language? We gain the language through a lot of input. So reading, listening, uh, interacting with people online or anything like that, conversations, dialogues. That's how we actually get the language. We don't get the language by using it. We have to use it right, to learn how to use it. But we get the language by having a lot of contact. Now, a lot of my students, they still find it difficult in the beginning to uh, use English to grab the words that they want. But then when I ask them, how often are you, you uh, hearing English in your day? Many of them, they don't hear English. They only hear English in the classroom. You can't do that. You have to be listening to English every day. You are participating in some forums online. 
trying to use your English. You have to make it a daily habit. The great thing is all of that is free now. Okay, 15 years ago, you have to buy English CDs. You have to buy English books. There's no foreigners to practice with. Yeah, it wasn't very easy. Nowadays, oh, you have so many options. Even you have video comments. We can make video comments on Facebook and through social media now. Isn't that amazing? So you can comment not only typing, but you can make video comments. Wow, you know, the options are amazing. So this is another video, and I want to show you uh, an, a, somebody who learned language a long time ago. So this is a legend, but this is somebody who learned language a long time ago. How did they do it? How did they approach it? And I'm going to ask some questions about this video after we finish. It's only a couple of minutes long. So I want you all to pay attention because I, I will ask you randomly, okay? Are you ready? All right, let's begin. some geese. So then he says, do not foretell me wife, for I will get no supper when I come home tonight. I don't sound like that. <laughs> Ronald slept with her while we took the horses. <laughs> no hearts, both of you. She probably was some smoke collared camp girl. Looked like that one's mother. <laughs> My mother <laughs> was a pure woman from a noble family, and I at least know who my father is. Where did you learn our language? I listened. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to ask some questions now. Uh, Fizz, are you there, Fizz? No, uh, Fajri, are you there, Fajri? Yes. Okay, Fajri. What was he doing at the beginning of the video? Well, I'm not sure, but uh, he's walking walk into the desert. Yeah, excellent. So they're on a long journey, right? Yes. Uh, I don't know what, what the movie is, but excellent. I think it, that's, 
It's okay. It's <laughs> an old movie. I will ask later if somebody knows it. Um, Yerham, what, uh, after the journey, they were sitting around the campfire. And what was this uh, Arab man doing? Um, he, he just listening to uh, listening to the pack, I think. Yes, good. He's listening to the group of people. Very good. Very good. And slowly but surely, what's happening, Irham? Um, he can, what is it, understand the language. Good. He can start to understand the language because he's concentrating on the person's emotion, concentrating on words that keep coming up uh, and people's reactions in that context. Day after day after day, he's listening. Very good, Irham. Okay, finally, what causes him to speak to them? What motivates him to speak to them? Who can tell me? It's a hard one, so I want someone to volunteer. What motivates him to speak to them, to reply to them? I think he's listening. Yeah, good, he listens. And why does he reply? So at one moment, he actually replies to the man in his own language. And they're very shocked. Why does he reply to that? Alia? Because he's understand what they say. Yes, good, he understand. And he was a bit upset because one of them was talking badly about his mother and that he replied. He had a strong motivation to reply. Okay, excellent. Very good, Alia. All right, so first of all, he learned by listening to the language. The same way that you learn your mother tongue, the same way that I learned Indonesian, mainly by listening, okay? When I could read, I, I also read, but mainly by listening. And then when he felt like he could reply, he made a reply. He had a motivation to reply, so he replied, all right? So more or less, this is how we all learn languages first, is through input, all right? So you see here, we have a house. And the walls of the house here are listening and reading. Okay, now people who don't know the script, for example, Chinese speakers or Arabic speakers, they find it hard to get to the reading stage. So maybe they can start with listening. But for Indonesian speakers, it's easy to also begin with reading. So you do reading and listening. More listening than reading, but you also do reading. And you do a lot of that, and that builds up the walls of your house. Okay, and then finally, you finish the house by speaking and writing. Now, what's happening under the surface? This is what the man was doing in the campfire. He had some time to sit, relax. Many of you, when you study English, you do not relax. You're thinking about all the things you don't understand. Ah, ganyati. Ah, terlalu advanced untuk saya. Yeah, this is too difficult. This is too advanced for me. Now you're thinking about that and you give up. Now the first thing you need to do when you learn a language is just relax, enjoy it. I had one student of mine, a very great young boy. He's probably already in university now, but when I taught him, he was just entering kindergarten. And when he started kindergarten, he was speaking English very well. And he used to tell me so many stories about action heroes and this and that. And I was shocked because the other students weren't like him. And I asked his mother, I said, was he born overseas? Did he grow up overseas? His English is so good. And his mom said, no, uh, not at all. We have the Disney Channel and we have a few uh, American cartoon channels on our, at home. And he loves to watch them every morning. And at that time, they didn't have Indonesian dubbing. At that time, the American cartoons were just stuck in English. So he loved these cartoons so much and he would sit and he'd watch and he'd try to understand. So it was this understanding, listen, look, guess the meaning. And he keeps doing that again and again, this little boy right? Who doesn't even know how to read. And then what did it result in? 
it resulted in him being able to produce it. Okay, so he had a strong ability to understand and he had a great output because he was so confident. He was so confident that what he was saying would make sense because he had a lot of time understanding it, listening and looking at it. Now, I want to ask you guys, how much time do you spend with English? It's okay if you don't understand it, but how much time do you actually spend with it? Um, Irham, how much time do you spend listening to or reading English every day? Um, how much time every day? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, actually, I yeah usually listen to the English music, so mm -hmm. okay. I think it's about five or four. I think. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So four four hours. Hours, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Great. You listen to a lot of music. Good. And music does help a lot because. Uh, it, it, with music, you still have the full phrases and it is beneficial. Uh, even better if you can see the lyrics that you're listening to. Maybe your favorite songs, you can print out the lyrics and stick it to your mirror at home or something like that. Very good, uh, Irham. Uh, Alia, how much time do you spend every day listening to or reading English? Uh, same, thank you. Oh, you like music, mainly music? And watch some of new movies. Movie? Something. Ah, excellent. Movies are very good. Excellent. Very good, Alia. Thank you. And you can see that both Irham and Alia are fairly confident speaking. I can hear the pronunciation is also quite nice. And I believe that's mainly to do with the fact that they listen to a lot of songs. They listen to a lot of material in English. Dimas, how much time do you spend every day? listening to or reading English. Uh, Dimas Siswoyo. Dimas Siswoyo. Uh, Dimas, are you there? Okay, something happened to you. Uh, Dimas, yes, go ahead. How much time do you spend? every day listening to or reading English. um i spend like for uh, time with like yeah hello mister yeah you can hear you dimas yeah uh i spend uh, like for um yeah hello okay. right no problem 15 minutes yeah. that's great good 15 uh, minutes is great yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dimas. There's a bit of a delay. All right. Um, next is um, Saddam. Are you here, Saddam? No. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm going to choose Velian. Is it Velian? You don't? Yes. Velian. V I. Belia, are you there? Just unmute yourself, yes. How much time do you spend each day listening to or reading English? I think three hours. One hour or three hours? Uh, three hours. Three hours, fantastic, very good. So you guys all have a very good habit because you can't progress with your English. Oh, there's Saddam, hey Saddam. How much time do you spend with English each day? Listening to or reading English. How much time do you spend every day? Sit down. Yeah. Yeah. How much time do you spend listening to or reading English? It's okay, no problem, <laughs> All right, let's continue. Uh, so the key is, this is the key to learning the language, to growing your, your language, is to focus on understanding. Okay. Listen, look, and guess. Don't worry if you can't produce the language. You must be able to understand as much as you can, all right? And then this is the same for advanced students. 
if you're already an intermediate to advanced student is the same. You need to be always pushing yourself to listen to and read things that you don't understand so that you can be exposed to the language. Very important. All right, so let's uh, leave this annotation. Thank you very much. Okay. So if you only focus on different situations and basic grammar, it's okay in the beginning. Uh, you can have a good foundation, but it must be natural language and it must be often enough for you to make progress. Okay, guys? A better approach for you guys as a learner is you look at the next level you need to get to. There's a, uh, how we say it? There's a very important thing that you can look up. It's the C E F R. Uh, we said self assessment, self assessment tool. Okay. This is something that you can all uh, download free online. If you look for it as a PDF, just look for it as .pdf. You can find it in Google. And this is something that will show you which is the next thing you need to work on with your listening, your speaking, your understanding, okay? So you should all have this uh, somewhere around your desk and you should circle the next thing you need to be working on because it'll ask you what you feel comfortable with. Very important. Do not beat yourself up. What does beat yourself up mean? Alia, can you answer me? What does beat yourself up mean? I don't know. Okay, that's all right. Because beat yourself up is an idiomatic expression. So if you beat yourself up, it means that you make yourself feel bad about something. So if you're progressing slowly with your English, or you're finding it very hard to understand what, what you want to understand, don't make yourself feel bad, all right? All of you have a natural ability to learn language, but you will learn language at a different pace. The main thing that every day you are experiencing some language and you're trying your best to use it, okay? The next one is you must use an approach that you enjoy, that you like, okay? If you don't like listening to music, don't listen to music. If you don't like watching YouTube videos in English, don't do that. But you must be doing something. So you find something you feel comfortable with and you do a lot of it. As long as it's natural English, it will be helping you. But the main thing is time, right? You need to be spending enough time with the language, whatever you want to choose. If it's games, you like playing English games, that's okay. Do it and make sure you do enough of it, but you should have enough language coming at you. Who likes to play Fortnite? Who likes to play Fortnite? You can unmute yourself and tell me. Anyone? No? Right? Uh, all right, but well, there's many games where you talk to people online and you experience the English as you're going. Um, and you can also do that in forums. Okay, so let's continue. We're almost finished. Right. Right, so all of you, if you wanted to in a six year period, you could learn three languages if you wanted to. To a really basic level where you feel confident you could learn three languages in six years right now all of that takes is a, is a daily habit and you take it two years for each language two years for each language it's not long at all okay that means that from primary school until high school actually you have the ability to learn six languages it's quite amazing What a few languages will give you is the ability to travel anywhere in the world and to be able to do anything that you dream, whether it shifts, whether it's work, whether it's business. Now, all of these can happen for you, even you're in Tasik, Malaya, even if you live in Papua, it's all possible for you now because everything's as accessible. You 
you can learn with your teacher from anywhere you can read books from your phone you can listen to podcasts on your phone you can watch youtube videos take notes everything is available for you okay i want to ask you all do you believe that you can all get a great success with learning english do you believe that you can it's not about that you will but do you believe that you can right ilham do you believe that you can get a great success learning english yes i believe absolutely uh razan how about you do you believe it yes i believe it excellent good very good because i want you to realize that nothing is holding you back god already gave you this ability in your mind the main thing that's holding you back is you often too critical of yourself it stops you from moving forward okay you must get as much english as you can and use it as often as you can and your mistakes and your worries will go away with time and practice All right, that's all right. While we wait for her to come back, I want to ask you about your own experience and your own difficulties. Um, maybe we can start with um, Alia. Tell me about some of the difficulties you've had learning English. Um, I have a bad habit in mixing Sundanese, Indonesian, and English to speak. So. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard, but sometimes uh, it depends of the situation. Okay. If you were with uh, somebody from the UK, for example, would, would you do it by accident? Uh, I use, um, what is it? Yeah, I mix in Bahasa. Okay, so. Mana ya? Lebih, lebih ke susah dan mikir dulu paling. Ya, okay, ya. Berarti belum automatic. It's not automatic yet to get to the English. That's okay. Yeah, maybe because you don't have enough chances to speak at length. Uh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. All right. Very good. And then that's something that you can focus on fixing. It's put yourself in situations often where you have to speak a lot. So you have to look for that situation. You know what you need, right? And that is that I'm not speaking enough. So you need to look for situations where you speak a lot. I know some people who have started, a, for example, a YouTube video. They've started yeah. a YouTube channel. Sorry. And the the only reason they start the YouTube channel is just I want to force myself to speak this language I've been learning. So I know some people have made it in Indonesian and they speak Indonesian, like my friend Dennis. Uh, do you know Guruku? Maybe you guys have heard of him, Guruku. Yeah. Yes. He, he gives all of his lessons in Indonesian. And actually, this was his way of learning Indonesian. It's because when he prepared for his videos, he would have to think, how am I going to explain this in Indonesian? And then he would like figure it out first and then he would give his lesson using Indonesian and so his Indonesian is really good now because he had this habit and so you could do that or you could put yourself in situations where you have to help people in English um, many things you could do so many things all right all right excellent uh, Miss uh, Murabis are you are you here yet <laughs> No. Yes. Me. Sorry. Yes, she's back. Okay, I was excellent. Out because the connectivity was. Oh, That's okay. okay. We have question time, so you can lead the lead the question session. I still have twenty minutes if you want. Okay. Um. Well. <laughs> okay. It's a questions 
and answer a session. So perhaps okay. I'd like to start from myself. <laughs> There's something I'm curious about. Well, I am, I like reading. Uh, however, mm -hmm. there are only certain genres that I read. Mm, mm -hmm. Maybe you have certain uh, websites that we all of us can try to read uh, those online books, electronic books. Mm -hmm. or the yeah. Website. Yeah. There's a website for graded readers i'm going to write this down yeah it's a website for graded readers which basically has uh short texts and they're usually fine for all ages and they're at different levels of reading so graded readers i will give you the link later and you can send this to all the participants and it's a link to a website with a lot of pdfs where you can download stories at different levels, starting from beginner until uh, more intermediate, right? And that's a good place to begin if you're not comfortable just grabbing a book off the shelf at Gramedia. This is a really good place to begin with these graded readers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any well, others? Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Yeah, we're waiting for the for the website. Okay, yeah. uh, for the next participant, perhaps we should ask other, others about others. Yeah, Do you absolutely. have any questions related to yeah. your obstacles in learning English? Is this like a... Mm -hmm. Surhat. <laughs> You're telling your problem. Yeah, you can have yeah, Surhat can, if can you want. Consult. Surhat. consult him. Come on. No worries. Um, how about Hannah or others? Trisha, do you have any question? Or would you like to say something? Would you like to tell your problems? Uh, your problems in learning English? How, okay, Hannah, was how do we overcome our nervousness while speaking in public? Okay, mm. excellent. Hannah, yes? How All right. Yeah. How do we overcome our nervousness while speak while speaking in public? Yeah, well, that's a very good question. Um, so when speaking in public, I guess you mean in front of quite a lot of people. Yeah, and you're speaking, and it's okay to feel nervous first of all. Yeah, it's okay to feel nervous because sometimes people feel nervous speaking in front of a large group, even in their own language. So if you were speaking Indonesian in front of a large group of people, maybe you also feel nervous, right? So number one is it's okay to feel nervous. Uh, the second one is before you speak in front of a lot of people, try speaking with someone you trust, yeah? Somebody you feel comfortable with. That's important to do that as much as you can. Because if you have to straight away speak in front of a large group and you're not even used to speaking English much, of course, that's probably too much for you. Yeah. So find a nice friend to talk to or a teacher or anybody that you can talk to and talk a lot with them. And later you will feel confident enough in, in a large crowd or group of people also. Does that answer your question, Hannah? Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you for the question. All right, who's next? Uh, Morabis, sorry, uh, Miss Morabis, you're, you're on mute. Yes. <laughs> okay, you're still on mute. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. forgot telling my name at first. Uh, okay. I'm Uni Wulandari, so you can call me ah. Uni. Uni, oh, ah, yeah. yeah, Miss Uni. Okay, I don't know why you, you put a long name at the front. Oh my goodness, you're Miss Sorry, Uni. I yes, I know. We've been I chatting. We've been chatting. My goodness. Okay. I haven't told it. I haven't told it. Sorry. Okay. okay. How about others? Do you want to tell your your obstacles, <laughs> or you want to tell your experience? Anything? Alia. Uh, okay. Yes, Alia. 
How do we understand the meaning of certain unfamiliar words in a reading passage? Ah, okay, excellent. Well, it's a lot easier now, Alia, than before, because you can take the um, word and you can put it into Google search and you can try to find different places that it's located on websites. And you can click and look at the context, click, look at the context, click, look at the context. So you're looking at that word in different phrases. And just from the phrases alone, you can usually get a good idea about what it means. So of course you look at the definition, but you try to find as many examples in context as you can. And there are even what we call corpus tools. They're called corpus tools. And what a corpus tool does is you can put any word or any phrase into the corpus tool and it will search through its books and everything that it has in its database and give you like tons and tons of examples. So if you want, every time you find a new word that you really want to use well, you can just have a little file on your computer. You put the word at the top and then you put a bunch of these examples below it. Yeah, and then when you're doing your review, you just have a look at the page for a little bit, have a look at the examples and go on to your next word. And this will help you not only understand what the word means, but it'll make you feel confident to use it in many different situations. Okay? Okay. All right, awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the question. Right, okay. Any others? Uh, Mr. Hughes, how if the unfamiliar word we found is in the TOEFL test or yeah, in a TOEFL uh, reading section, we are yeah. not allowed to search for the definition of the yeah, word. Of so how do we understand, understand it? Yeah. How, right, how can so. we understand the, the meaning of the word? Um, well, you can usually maybe guess from the context, but ideally you want to already know the word. Um, like guessing may help you. I mean, that's a last, a last chance, right? Uh, for you to try and have a go at the lesson. But the thing I always advise my students to do is have a look at the level of English you're at, and then you go for TOEFL or IELTS. So if you are an intermediate student, solid intermediate student, then when you take IELTS, there will be some questions you don't know the answer to. There will be some listening things that you miss, but your score will be okay, right? And if you take IELTS or TOEFL training beforehand and you get used to the format of the test, your score will go up even more. But there'll always be some words you don't understand, especially in a test like TOEFL or IELTS, why? because TOEFL or IELTS is meant to test you right up to C1 level or higher than C1 level. So guaranteed there'll be some words that you don't understand. Um, and then, so you just do your best and you continue. As long as your English is at the level that you wanna get the score for, you shouldn't have a problem. These tests are very well designed. Um, just don't freak out. Don't get like, oh my God, I don't understand. I'm so, I'm so silly because trust me, even my very upper intermediate student, my student who went to Germany, who studied there, she got a very good IELTS score. I think she got close to eight. There were some things she didn't understand. There were some words that she got stuck on and that's okay. All right, guys? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. We still right, have other participants yeah, want fun. to ask want to ask i want to ask again i want to ask again okay, okay. Go ahead, Alia. carry on do you have any tips or how to speak english looks more professional oh all right yeah definitely uh, if you're used to speaking english with your friends in a casual way uh, it'll be a little bit difficult to adapt to speaking english in a professional environment and to tell the truth, even young native speakers have a problem sometimes adapting their language to a professional environment, okay? So the best thing to do is to have a look at it being done. 
Okay, you have a look, for example, at professional seminars. And you have a you focus specifically on the question time. When you look at a professional seminar and they have a question time, you get to hear two sides. You get to hear the answer from the speaker and you get to hear the question from the audience. And they will try to use a professional standard of English because they're speaking to their peers. So that's the, the, the tip, yeah? Have a look at it in context and try to mimic it and mark down when you see a phrase that's maybe different from what you would use. Um, and then just try to be polite. The main thing, try to be polite. Um, using, actually using slang words when you're in a professional environment is actually not so bad in English context. A lot of them are okay, uh, but you have to be polite and you shouldn't use, how we said, um, language that you think is too like wanna, gonna, uh, shoulda, that kind of thing. If you make it a little bit more formal, a little bit more complete. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, okay, excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Miss uh, yeah. Yuni, you're on mute again. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, that would be the last question. That was so unfortunate. Thank you so much for the questions to all of our participants. Yeah, and thank you so for the answer, Mr. Huge. It's been, uh, it's, it's so nice to have you around. Uh, and this sharing was uh, give give the, the sharing gave us a lot of knowledge about English and how can we uh, what is it improve our English skill even better and the point I got from the sessions and to all of you participants that you you might uh, think the same just like me is that uh, when we want to talk uh, when we want to improve our English skill have to practice and then uh, try it don't be afraid of talking don't be afraid of uh, being criticized because the uh, what is it the comments is what built us okay and then we, we could also uh, look at other people uh, join a seminar join a workshop or any any discussions that we can that we can join so that we can practice our English when it's written or uh, what is spoken. Okay, thank you so much for all of you who have joining today's session. Uh, don't forget, I think we still have more sessions to come around. So wait for the time. Well, let's close this session by saying Hamdallah together. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Well, see you around. Bye. Thank bye. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye guys. Thanks. See you around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yu. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye guys. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Ini kok bentar dulu mau pamamin. Sebentar, ini susah nih mau kliknya susah. Okay.